It's becoming increasingly more difficult to actually keep up with Canadian politics or the news. There's a ton of mainstream media and propaganda out there. There's a lot of content creators. There's a lot of question periods. There's a lot of Trudeau controversies. He said this to that country. He's done this. He's spending money on this. He's taking an illegal trip there. It's just very, very difficult. But specifically talking about question period, which is a very luxurious part of our democracy. I'm not sure if a lot of people are aware of this, but it's just part of our British British monarchy system where we're actually allowed to see our federally elected members of parliament debate in real time. There's even viewing galleries, which I'm sure you're aware of by now. That's where Nazis are more than welcome, apparently, to uh, come and attend. Hopefully that never happens again because that's pretty, what do they call that word? Um, Anti-Semitic and also very messed up. There's a lot that is happening. And the highlights are usually between Pierre Poilievre, the leader of the opposition in Canada, and Justin Trudeau. Now, it's it's pretty entertaining if you do have the stamina and the patience to sit through all of it. And, well, that's kind of what I do. I stream question period every day that it happens on my second channel, House of Canada, where the link for that is down in the description. If you ever want to participate in those live streams, the chat, the community is very active and uh, very entertaining to say the least i like to take those highlights and show you guys here on the main channel of mr sunshine baby what has happened so today pierre polyev just unloaded i mean he called trudeau a little baby that he's crying in the fetal position hiding in the shower like it's just insane how much attacks that pierre does now justin trudeau of course was not there he doesn't like to do his job we all know that so he wasn't there so we've got some other liberal mps that took his place and well it's an absolute bloodbath so i've got the highlights ready to go i want to encourage you to hit that like button check to see if you're subscribed and sit back relax and enjoy the show and before i do i also want to let you know that the mr sunshine baby stickers me on the moose when i share my screen is available for purchase down in the description or the pinned comment below and without further ado here is the question period highlight reel Questions are Oral questions. Questions are had. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. I knew that this Prime Minister was not worth the cost. We just didn't realize he would admit it himself, but here's what it took. I was moments away from holding a massive thousand-person rally of common-sense Nova Scotians to axe the tax. The Prime Minister heard the news. He was huddled up in a ball in the fetal position, sweating bullets. As <laughs> Holy shit! Asking for some relief, but only some relief came, Mr. Speaker. Not for everyone everywhere. Will I need to hold massive axe the tax rallies in every liberal riding to finally do away with it? Oh my God, Pierre! Drop some apples in the chat, everybody. How do you like them apples? Even the speaker can't contain his smile. He's like, yeah, man, Trudeau called me when he was sitting in the shower crying. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this government has developed and will be rolling out a plan to deploy heat pumps, free heat pumps, in Atlantic Canada and across the country. I'm a robot, I'm a liberal. Issues put more money back beep, 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 beep. Of Canadians and actually help us to address climate change, something that the Honourable, the opposition members seem to ignore on an ongoing basis. Weak, that's a weak response. That I have chef the, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition sure, admitted that he's not worth the cost by announcing that he would pause his carbon tax for some people on some fuels for some period of time. And then his Rural Affairs Minister said that other Canadians could have had the same pause, but for the fact that they didn't elect Liberals. Apparently we're going to have different tax rates in different constituencies depending on how people vote. Why is it, Mr. Speaker, that the Liberal MPs in Thunder Bay, North Bay, Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, other freezing cold communities are not getting the same break? Is it because their local Liberal MP is utterly useless? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Not a hard minister. The Honourable Minister. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, certainly, it is very important that we are addressing both affordability concerns and fighting climate change across this country. The heat pump program, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, if he'd done his homework, would know applies across the country. It actually will help to ensure that we are reducing the cost of home heating, uh, oil heating across in every province and territory. While I know it's buying it. Climate change in a thoughtful way. <laughs> That's a weak ass response. That I have the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. That is hot air in cold weather. Just today, the snow started following Bravo. in cold Ottawa. Edmonton's also cold. It has it Liberal MPs. Winnipeg, they call it winter peg for a reason. People there are forced to pay tax on natural gas. All these cities have Liberal MPs. The Prime Minister claims that he only backed down on the carbon tax for some Canadians because of the advocacy of terrified Liberal members. So mm -hmm. he's really saying that Liberal MPs in the areas where this pause does not apply are totally useless and will never be able to defend Canadians heating their homes. Oh my God, the master himself, man. He came prepared, and the Liberals did not, and it is really showing. Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition knows that Canadians who live in jurisdictions where the price on pollution applies get over $1,000 a year from the Government of Canada to fight climate change. When it comes to the Conservatives, they want to take that $1,000 out of the pockets of Canadians, Mr. Speaker. Our climate policy has resulted in 53 megatons being removed. That's the equivalent of 11 million cars a year. Mr. Speaker, while they keep their heads in the sand and pretend that climate change isn't real, we're going to fight climate change and we're going to help Canadians with more yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're pretending climate change doesn't exist anyways if you're pausing the carbon tax. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. By your own policies. That if Canadians want a pause from the carbon tax, they need to elect a local Liberal MP. She's got it exactly wrong. What they need to do is elect a common sense Conservative government. Yeah. They'll act. Yeah. This is not only hurting the pocketbook of Canadians who are forcing seniors to choose between eating and heating. Now, Saskatchewan, Alberta, BC, and Ontario are asking for similar breaks. In fact, the Saskatchewan government will, is refusing to collect the tax on the utility. Does the Prime Minister realize that he is not only bankrupting Canadians and leaving them in the cold, he's actually dividing our country? He does not care. That is his plan, and it's not, a it's not working. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, look, as a, <clears throat> as a resident of Ontario, I remember the last time that a province elected a common-sense Conservative government, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Right. Look what they did to education. Look how they gutted health care. Look what happened with Walkerton, Mr. Speaker. We know, as Canadians, what happens when you elect common-sense Conservatives. They gut programs, they hurt Canadians, and they're certainly not there when it comes to fighting climate change or supporting Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I feel bad for that kid that she's carrying, man. It's got to be so much stress on her in the Liberal cabinet. Can't be healthy. And on home heating only benefits Canadians that live where Liberals need to save their seats. All Canadians need some relief when it comes to the cost of home heating. That's why New Democrats propose taking the GST off of all home heating. But it's a measure that Liberals and Conservatives have both opposed. So when will the Liberals stop playing games and bring in relief for all Canadians this cold winter? Yeah. Why not advocate for getting rid of the carbon tax? Not a hard minister. The Honourable Minister. In its entirety. Not a hard minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, and again, I would just say that folks in the chamber need to do their homework. This program actually applies across the country. The, uh, the rebate uh, applies, uh, uh, the, the doubling of the rural top-up applies across the country. The heat pump program applies across the country. It applies to all folks who are actually challenged by the, the, the cost right now of home heating oil.
The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Liberal NDP government is finally saying the quiet part out loud. They admitted that their carbon tax makes life more unaffordable and does nothing to help the environment. But only certain people get relief. Those who happen to live in places where Liberal polling numbers are the worst. Everyone, gets, everyone else gets told that their vote doesn't matter and that they don't care. If the Liberals can take the carbon tax off for some Canadians, why can't they take it off for all Canadians? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I've said a number of times, this program applies across the country in every province and territory of this country. We have developed a solution with respect to home heating oil that will put more money back into the pockets of Canadians. It will continue to, to fight and reduce emissions. It will address both the climate issue and challenges with respect to affordability. Yeah. The Honourable Make it for everyone. The Minister can rely on his prepared talking points all he wants, but that wasn't quite how the Minister for Rural Economic Development spun it yesterday. She told Canadians that if they wanted to be exempted from Liberal carbon taxes, they had to wait for it. Vote Liberal. <laughs> My neighbours in the GTA have a question then for the Minister. They have 24 Liberal MPs in Toronto, 11 in Peel, 7 in York, 10 of them are Cabinet Ministers. If this is the largest concentration of Liberal ridings in Canada, then why are they still paying a carbon tax? Yeah. Melissa's good, man. She is good. I dropped some W's in the chat for her right now. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, home heating oil is a challenge not just for Atlantic Canadians but for many in rural Canada. That has been the case for many years, but became more, uh, more, uh, more uh, forceful yeah, 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 yeah. as the price of home heating oil <laughs> skyrocketed, went up 75% in 2022. What I would say is we've come up with a solution that actually will enable Canadians to do the right thing by discriminating. Climate change will actually put more money in their pockets. It is a good solution for the climate. It is a good solution for the affordability of Canadians in Atlanta, Canada, and everywhere across this country. The Honourable Member for Dufferin. The has finally admitted the carbon tax makes heating your home more expensive, and he's pausing the carbon tax in Atlantic Canada. And we know why, because the Minister for Long Range Mountains said Atlantic MPs forced the Prime Minister to do it. So actually what the Prime Minister is saying after eight years is that if you're a Liberal MP from Brampton, Toronto, Mississauga or Thunder Bay, your voice doesn't matter at all. You can't have any change. They are effectively useless. So will the Prime Minister stop playing politics with the carbon tax and just axe it? Here, here. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, as a member of Parliament from Ontario, I know that Ontario families get over $1,000 a year for fighting pollution, Mr. Speaker. I guess that Ontario MP wants to take that $1,000 right out of their pockets, Mr. Speaker. That's exactly what he's advocating for. Instead, our government is committed to making sure that we help Canadians not just fight pollution, not just fight climate change, but also deal with affordability. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Dufferin Caledon. Now we've just been treated to the great carbon tax fable. First, it was revenue neutral. Second, you get more money than you pay into it. Third, it doesn't, it fights climate change. It does none of those things, Mr. That's Speaker. Right. What it does and what the Prime Minister has admitted by pausing the carbon tax is it makes it's it more expensive scam. for everyone. The real tragedy is for MPs, is for Canadians outside of Atlantic Canada. Why? It's not being paused. And no, most people heat their homes in Ontario, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, BC, and Quebec, not with heating oil. It doesn't apply across the country. Will they stop playing politics, picking winners and looters, yeah. dividing Canadians, and axe the tax? Yeah. Colleagues? Colleagues? 
Let her have minute. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to correct... Let's go, Harry Pot Smoker. What you got to say? 15 projections in emission growth in Canada. We're going that in 2030, we would be 80 million tonnes above our 2005 levels. We took that out of the atmosphere, Mr. Speaker, and we've reduced emissions by another 50 million tonnes. That's the equivalent of removing from our roads more than 20 million vehicles, Mr. Speaker. That's one of the things that we've done in the last eight years. We've done so many more things to fight climate change. We have the best record of all G7 countries, something that never happened, not once, under the Conservative Party for 10 years, Mr. Here, Speaker. Here. Before I give the floor to the Honourable oh, Member, come just on, like to dude. all members to be respectful. your turn to speak until you're recognized by the Chair. Yeah. Honourable oh. Member for Foothills. The must be in the air, because the Prime Minister has announced his re-election campaign. Vote Liberal in three years, we're going to quadruple the carbon tax on home heating, gas and groceries. After eight <laughs> years, this Prime Minister is in a panic mode because there's no, he knows his NDP Liberal government isn't worth the cost. That's now right. we have a Liberal Minister from Long Range Mountains, Newfoundland, Labrador, admitting that only Canadians who vote Liberal will get an exemption from the carbon tax. That is what just insane. Minister from Edmonton Centre or the Liberal M MP from Calgary Skyview. Were these MPs so incompetent and so out of touch they couldn't secure an exemption on the carbon tax for Alberta? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty similar talking points to what Pierre said. I prefer Pierre's delivery. It was also the first time we heard it. It was from Pierre. But. The Honourable Minister. We know that carbon pricing I'll allow it. reduces emissions and puts more money in the pockets of middle class families. We made a decision to tack a highly polluting source of fuel, home heating oil, in a different way so we can get rid of it faster. Mr. Speaker, we're doing this by making a record investment in heat pump technology, which is not only going to reduce emissions at a household level, it's going to save families thousands thousands of dollars every year. This is sensible policy, it's good for the environment, it's good for the economy, and it's good for the households, not just in my riding, but right across the country. Here, here. Then why did you pause the carbon tax for the East Coasters? The foothills. The carbon tax works only if it's politically expedient. There it is. The carbon tax exemption doesn't help 97% of Canadians who are already struggling to put food on the table and heat their homes. Now we have a Liberal minister from Newfoundland, Labrador, telling Albertans that the only reason you're not getting an exemption is he didn't vote Liberal. Uh -huh. so yep. the minister, the Liberal minister from Edmonton Centre and the Calgary Liberal MP from Skyview not defending Alberta families? Were they not defending their own 81% of their constituents who rely on natural gas to heat their homes will not get a carbon tax exemption? Will these Liberal MPs from Alberta stand in this house, defend their constituents, and admit their Prime Minister is not worth the cost? Like, you're just showing your hand by discriminating against people that don't vote for your party and taxing them at a higher rate. That is corruption at the highest well, level. I guess that member uh, didn't hear the minister earlier when he said that home heating oil was exempted right across the country. Furthermore, for his constituents in Alberta, they're getting over $1,000 a year in a climate rebate to help fight climate change. But if that member and any other... They're paying more than $1,000 a year for carbon tax. Why don't they stand up to Premier Danielle Smith as they're trying to gut their pensions, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. On this side of the House, we're going to stand for Canadians yeah. right across this country when it comes to their pensions, when it comes to affordability, and it fights to climate change. They're reckless, and they're not worth the risk. Thank yeah, you, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. I think Danielle Smith is trying to make the pension plan better for Albertans. Really, I would, I would like seek the uh, cooperation of all members, uh, please, to... Uh, Keep your comments uh, so that the speaker can hear the questions, but also so that the person who would ask the questions can certainly hear the response. The Honourable Member uh, from Peace River, Prince George, uh, Northern Rockies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After eight years, this desperate Prime Minister in total freefall finally admitted that his carbon tax is punishing Canadians. The Prime Minister also announced in his re election platform that to vote Liberal in Yukon means quadrupling the carbon tax on home heating. And this weekend, the minister from Newfoundland admitted the exemption didn't apply to all Canadians across the country, including all Yukoners. My question is for the Liberal Member of Parliament for Yukon. Will he step up and stand up to this Prime Minister and demand that the carbon tax be permanently removed for all Yukoners? Yeah. yeah. It's a Liberal riding, right? They should do it. Let her have been this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
As I've said a number of times, this program and the heat pump program actually applies in every province and territory across this country. But I would also, I would also suggest that yes, disproportionately there are more heat pumps and more heating oil in Atlantic Canada. We actually are focused on ensuring we are addressing pressing needs in every part of the country, including providing significant funding for abandoned oil, oil and gas wells in Alberta and British Columbia. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.